So you're thinking about moving to Redmond, Oregon? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be covering in today's video. Today we're actually going to be zipping around town, showing you a couple different amenities, but also talking about all the pros of living in Redmond and Central Oregon. So if this video sounds like it's for you, then stick around because we're going to get after it right now. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living, eating, sleeping, working, playing, the good and the bad of Redmond, Oregon, then subscribe to the channel and tap that notification bell below so you can be the first to know about the current market here in Central Oregon and Redmond specifically. My name's Ryan and I've lived in Central Oregon for over 30 years. My partner Zach and I, we get calls and texts every day from people just like you looking for help on making their move to Central Oregon. Whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or even set up a Zoom meeting. We'd be happy to help you make that smooth move to Central Oregon and Redmond or anywhere else nearby. Okay, so today's video, like stated in the intro, it's gonna be the 10 pros of living in Redmond, Oregon. Right now, we're kind of right in the heart of everything. Right behind me is City Hall. We're standing at Centennial Park here. Downtown is behind me a couple of blocks away. The main drag of Redmond is right here. We're in the thick of it all. We're gonna be zipping around town now, showing you different points of reference to give you a better understanding of what Redmond is. 36,000 people, we're sitting at about 3,000 feet in elevation. The weather's great, it's sunny, and we're just gonna get after it right now. So without further ado, let's just head over to our first stop, the first pro of living in Redmond, Oregon. Pro number one of living in Redmond, Oregon, the airport is actually here in Redmond, not in Bend. Now the majority of the people that live in this area, yes, they live in Bend, there's 100,000 plus that live over there, but there's also 35 to 40,000 people that live in this area here in Redmond too. The commercial airport is here in town. It offers 28 different commercial flights a day, starting at 6 a.m. and going all the way up until 10 p.m. The majority of the flights go to Seattle. Seven of 28 to and from our Seattle every single day. That's the main hub that we fly to, but we also fly down into California, San Francisco, LAX, San Diego, Burbank, and now Palm Springs. Other cities that the airport flies to are Phoenix, Arizona, Denver, as well as Salt Lake City, with talks of adding Dallas, Fort Worth, as well as Chicago to the mix to help people commuting back east have a better flight opportunity and better options. Um, our, the terminal here, here is 132,000 square feet, six gates, 95,000 people fly through this airport on a monthly basis. It was talked about back in 2016 that we wouldn't eclipse a million passengers through this airport until 2026. Well, we did that back in 2021, and there's no signs of that stopping now. So that gives you a sense of how fast this area is growing based off of the amount of airport traffic that we're seeing. And so this airport isn't really a middle tier hub where you're flying in and then commuting to another destination. This is a final destination. It's a starting point and a final destination. So you can see that traffic here is increasing based off the people that want to come and visit the area as well as live in the area here. So pro number one for living in Redmond, Oregon is that they have the airport, not Bend. Pro number two of living in Redmond, Oregon, the Deschutes County Fairgrounds and Expo Center is also located right here in Redmond. Yeah, I know Bend gets all the notoriety and all the recognition for being this awesome place to live and move to, and it's a, a huge tourist destination, an outdoor mecca, but Redmond is the exact same thing. And Redmond also has the Deschutes County Fairgrounds and Expo Center. In fact, it's just down the road from the airport. We were just there a couple minutes ago, and now we're right here at the fairgrounds. There's planes that fly overhead here daily. Like we said a couple minutes ago, 28 commercial flights. Most of those fly right overhead here. But if you look right behind me here, we've got the front gate to the Expo Center. It's a 340 acre piece of land, 10,000 different parking spots, and there's all kinds of in buildings, out buildings, inside the gates there. There is a large 340,000 square foot arena, 4,000 permanent seats, as well as the ability to add another 4,000 if there's gonna be concerts going on or other types of events. High school graduations locally happen at this event center. The fair is at the end of July every year and goes into the first week of August. And so these aren't fairgrounds that are just specifically used for that one week a year. This is a very pristine piece of property. This was the new site of the fairgrounds dating back to the early 2000s. And before that, we had the fairgrounds in Redmond again, but they were low, more, more centrally located in the city. We are currently in the city, but we're just on the southeast side of the city limits. But as you can see here, all kinds of events are going on constantly. 
400 events are planned annually at this event center and this piece of property. They range from RV shows to outdoor shows to equestrian shows to rodeos that happen multiple times a year, as well as home shows, garden shows, all kinds of stuff. So if there's a big event happening in Central Oregon, while Ben may like to host it, and they do host a lot of them, the primary grounds for hosting big events, trade shows, etc., is right here at the Deschutes County Fairgrounds in Redmond, Oregon. So that's pro number two of living in Redmond, Oregon. Pro number three, living in Redmond, Oregon. The Dry Canyon Recreational Area goes right through the center of town. 270 acres of preserved land. This canyon, of course, is, has been here for hundreds of thousands of years, but it's been modernized. Now it's accessible to all kinds of people that want to come out and enjoy the outdoor activity without having to go too far to get there. Uh, like I said, there, we're right in the middle of town here. There's houses right behind me up on the ridge, and that stretches all the way down to the edge of the canyon, and it comes right back the other way. Houses everywhere that get to enjoy the amazing views and access points of this canyon. If you look beyond me here, there's gonna be the fenced-in dog area, off-leash dog park. If we look the other way, this stretches down another mile or two. But we have the start to the disc golf course, and beyond that is gonna be the sports complexes for softball and baseball, tennis and pickleball. Where else can you get such a unique landscape right in the center of town where locals and visitors get to access outdoor amenities without having to go too far to get there. So this is pro number three, and it's the Dry Canyon Recreational Area right in the middle of Redmond, Oregon. Pro number four for living in Redmond, Oregon, home affordability, cost of living. Now, if we're comparing it to Bend, it's gonna be much cheaper, much more affordable here in Redmond than it is in Bend. Now, the two towns are one and the same when it comes to access points to all the outdoor activity and great things that Central Oregon has to offer but the median price point for a house in Bend currently sits at $750,000, whereas the current median price point for a house in Redmond is $525,000. Again, 15 miles apart from each other, two distinct personalities in terms of towns and how the cultures are, but the point is, is that if you live in Bend or if you live in Redmond, you still have the same access to all the amazing amenities that Central Oregon has to offer for people that love to be outdoors. So, we get about 8,000 people that are moving into the area on an annual basis. And a lot of those relocations come from Seattle, from Portland, from the Bay Area, down into Southern California, LA and San Diego. So the cost of living, the houses down there and up in Seattle, of course, are much higher than they are here today in Central Oregon. However, if you're considering affordability, cost of living as a major factor in your decision when you relocate, strongly consider Redmond because there is such great value here in this town compared to Bend, which still has great things to offer as well. But when it comes to affordability and what you can get for your dollar, Redmond is something that you should, is a place that you should definitely consider when making your decision to move to Central Oregon because of the lifestyle that it offers. Pro number five of living in Redmond, Oregon, it's gonna be the weather. Okay, just like in Bend, just like anywhere else in Central Oregon, we get 300 days of sunshine a year. Now, in Redmond, we're sitting at about 3,000 feet in elevation, about 600 feet lower than in Bend. So, if you look around me today, it's in the middle of fall right now, we've got a little bit of a dusting of snow. This exact same snowstorm that came through last night left about three to five inches of snow anywhere, in particular, in, in certain points of Bend, because they're a little bit higher, they're closer to the mountains, and so what we have here is a dusting of snow. We do get snow, we get about 10 inches of snow in Redmond per year, but it's not nearly as bad as other areas of Central Oregon because they're closer to the mountains and they're a little bit higher in elevation. So with 300 days of sunshine a year, the average temperature in the summer is about 82 to 84 degrees, but we also have stretches of days where we'll get up into the high 90s and even low 100s, and that can drag on for a week and maybe even beyond but it's a dry heat. I know you've probably heard that before. We don't have much humidity here, which is true. We're at higher elevations, we're in a high desert, and so we don't get that precipitation and that really thick, dense heat that can just make you sweat through your shirt upon just walking outside. So that's another great benefit of the, the area here is the weather. It's gonna be pretty mild for, throughout the course of the year. So in the winter time, it's gonna be cold, it freezes at night, and we'll get some snow. It sometimes accumulates, but usually if it shows up, it burns off and melts away in just a matter of days. So again, a very mild landscape and weather cycle that goes throughout the entire year here in Redmond. Another great reason why you should consider living in Redmond or anywhere else in Central Oregon, but that's reason number five 
for Redmond, Oregon. Pro number six, living in Central Oregon and Redmond specifically, of course, it's an outdoor haven, right? Central Oregon is known nationally for its outdoor amenities and the recreation that it has to offer. So Redmond is no exception to that rule. We're right smack dab in the middle of Central Oregon here. We've got hiking, we've got the lake life, we've got the skiing, we've got outdoor recreational activities of all kinds. We've got 30 plus golf courses. There's just so much to do in this area. And that's, so, and that's the primary reason why so many people want to relocate here is that it's a slower pace of life, but it's also very central in proximity to other areas. The airport's right here. We have so many ways of getting to and from point A to point B. It's such a unique area, but the outdoor activity is what really puts Central Oregon and Redmond on the map. I didn't mention Smith Rock yet. We're gonna go check that out here pretty soon. But the point is, is that we have such a cool outdoor area and it's just nationally renowned for what it has to offer. And that's why so many people, four, four and a half million people visit the area on an annual basis. It's just a great place to come, recreate, vacation, and eventually people wind up deciding that, hey, I wanna live here because this area, Central Oregon, Redmond, Bend specifically, is just such a unique area, unlike most places in the country. And that's why this is pro number six, the outdoor haven that is Redmond, Oregon, and the surrounding Central Oregon region. Pro number seven of living in Redmond, Oregon is its central proximity to everything that is Central Oregon. Now, what I mean by that is Redmond being where it is on the map and its proximity to the other amenities Central Oregon has to offer, it's not just all about Bend all the time. So there's all kinds of stuff outside of Bend that we love about Central Oregon as well. And Redmond is kind of the focal point and center point of, of all these other amenities. We already have the airport. We've already got the fairgrounds. We've, we've touched on those already in this video, but we have other things too that are just not too far away and they are further away from Bend to get to, like Lake Billy Chinook to the north. That's about 25 minutes from Redmond. Uh, Prineville Reservoir, another great reservoir for skiing on the lake, uh, boat, people that love the lake life. We've got Prineville Reservoir. We've got Lake Billy Chinook to the north, Prineville's to the east. Um, Mount Bachelor's about 45 minutes away. Hoodoo is another great ski area, a little bit smaller. That's about 30 minutes up Santa Ana Pass. That's behind me to the west. We're looking at City Hall right now, but something that's really unique about Redmond is its central location in terms of where everything else is in Central Oregon. We'll look at it on a map here, but it's right smack dab in the middle and it's got a great layout. I do love the city layout as well, but again, that's pro number seven and that's going to be the reason why I love it is its central location to just about everything else that is Central Oregon and that Central Oregon lifestyle. So with that being said, let's hop in the car. We're gonna head out to pro number eight, which I think you're really gonna enjoy. And let's get after that one right now too. Pro number eight, living in Redmond, Oregon, Smith Rock State Park. Now I'm not a climber, but I love hiking. And this is an absolute incredible destination when it comes to hiking. Misery Ridge is right behind me. It goes all the way up to the very top of the cliffs. You can look, uh, look at the panoramic view of Central Oregon from the top at 3,200 feet. I'm currently sitting at about 2,800 feet right now. And if you look down to the, into the bottom of the canyon there, that's about 2,600 feet. So the rise of these rock formations is about 600 to 700 feet in vertical. 800,000 people will come and visit this incredible landscape on an annual basis. And it's world renowned for its climbing, of course, but the hiking, the camping, the horseback riding, people come for just the scene, the vantage points. It really a very unique landscape. There's really nothing else like it in this area. And there's really nothing else like it in the world for that matter. So it's right in our backyard. It truly is a spectacular scene. You have to come here at least once and enjoy this view. It's not too far away. It's about a 45 minute drive from Bend, about a 15 minute drive from Redmond. And you can see here, the weather's not so bad. Where there's snow in Redmond today, a dusting, and there's about three to five inches in Bend, there's really no snow here at all. So we're at a little bit lower of elevation. So that gives you more access to outdoor amenities, even when in town, the weather can be suspect. So reason number eight for living in Redmond, Oregon, Smith Rock State Park.
Pro number nine, living in Redmond, Oregon, golf is available year round. Now I know I didn't pick the best day for this, but we just got a dusting of snow overnight. It kind of came un unexpectedly. But the point is, is that right now what you see is a golf course where the snow is starting to melt off. It'll be gone by tomorrow. The golf course will be open again tomorrow morning. In Bend, there's three to five inches of snow right now on the ground. Those golf courses, they close from November 1st all the way until mid-March and sometimes into late April if you're up even at higher elevations like Sun River, which is at 4,200 feet, and they're known for their golf as well. But Ben's at 3,600 feet, dozens of golf courses, they're spectacular. However, the only caveat, which is kind of a bummer, is that they're only open for part of the year. Whereas down here in Redmond at 3,000 feet, we get more sunshine, warmer days, these golf courses, they get to stay open year round. So if you're a golf guy and you love to play, or a, go or, or a golf gal, you get to play golf year round, no matter what the weather is, except on days where there is snow, like today. And some days like this, you just take the day off and you can prepare for the next day where you can keep your short game sharp year round, right here in Redmond. Pro number 10 of living in Redmond, Oregon. The downtown area is up and coming, it's growing, it used to be just the main byway, Highway 97, going right through downtown. Yes, this 5th Street right here was downtown Redmond, and it was the highway as well going right through. So the big semi-trucks, anybody passing through the town would have to go right through downtown. That highway has since been rerouted. As recently as 2013 is when this whole reroute took place and opened. So the highway now is to the east, a couple of blocks away. And now we have more of a historic, more traditional style downtown area. You can see the sign behind me here, but now it's flooded with retail shops and restaurants and coffee shops, all kinds of things that a traditional downtown area would have. And so that's what we have now with Redmond. The city's growing, we're getting more and more character. It's attracting more and more businesses downtown and it's becoming more of an epicenter for activity here in Redmond, Oregon. So that is pro number 10 of living in Redmond, Oregon. And that will conclude our video today. Again, thank you guys for watching. Our goal here is to earn your business you guys need to get in touch with us. You know how to do that. You can call us, you can text us, you can send us an email or even set up a Zoom meeting. We'd love to have an opportunity to chat with you guys about your real estate needs. So until further notice, we're looking forward to talking to you guys. Have a great day.